France has crossed a quiet but defining threshold in its undersea warfare program. On December 12th, the reactor aboard the nuclear-powered attack submarine De Grasse went critical for the first time, a controlled nuclear chain reaction known as divergence. It may sound like a technical milestone, but in strategic terms, it marks the moment when De Grasse becomes a living warship, one capable of sustaining power, speed, and silence for decades to come. This single event signals far more than the start of a reactor. It demonstrates that Europe and France in particular remains fully invested in the nuclear underpinnings of power projection. At a time when global navies are accelerating submarine modernization, from the U.S. Navy's Virginias to the Royal Navy's AUKUS successors and Russia's ever-expanding Yasin fleet, France is methodically reinforcing its place among the world's nuclear navies. The Barracuda class is its instrument of quiet strength beneath the seas. The controlled divergence at Cherbourg is a ritual that blends science, precision, and national identity. When that reactor achieves sustained fission, it joins a continuous chain of vigilance that will last through the 2060S. From this moment onward, the submarine's reactor is under permanent monitoring by France's nuclear propulsion officers, a lineage of expertise dating back to the Cold War. Behind that discipline stands a network of national champions, Technicatome overseeing the reactor design, Naval Group integrating the plant, and the French Atomic Energy Commission ensuring safety and longevity. Together they form an ecosystem that guarantees autonomy in one of the most guarded technologies on Earth. The Barracuda's reactor is derived from the same K-15 lineage that powers France's triumphant class ballistic missile submarines and the carrier Charles de Gaulle. Compact but potent, it delivers roughly 150 megawatts of thermal output through a pressurized water system, feeding a hybrid steam electric propulsion train. In practical terms, this means a combination of high-speed capability and near-silent electric cruising, a dual mode of stealth and sprint that allows French commanders to move swiftly into position, then disappear into the background noise of the ocean. Every component from the 400-ton reactor block to the pressure hull sections has been optimized for quietness, vibration, isolation, and efficiency. For the submarine's crew, the implications are profound. Nuclear propulsion removes one of the greatest tactical liabilities of diesel-electric boats, the need to snorkel. The Rubis class, which the Barracuda replaces, had to periodically raise mass and expose its position to recharge batteries. The Barracuda, by contrast, lives beneath the surface almost indefinitely. Its limits are no longer set by fuel or oxygen, but by food, maintenance, and the mental endurance of its sailors. This endurance translates directly into operational freedom, the ability to loiter, shadow, or strike without betraying presence. In submarine warfare, that is priceless. The De Grasse is not just quieter or faster, it is fundamentally more versatile. Its weapon suite includes F-21 heavyweight torpedoes, Exocet SM-39 anti-ship missiles, and the MDCN land attack cruise missile, a strategic weapon that allows strikes deep inland without surfacing. Few nations on Earth can field a conventional cruise missile capability from a nuclear-powered submarine. Add to that a modular design that anticipates future unmanned vehicles, both aerial and underwater, and the Barracuda emerges as a platform built for decades of evolution. Yet, perhaps the most intriguing leap is in the sphere of intelligence and special operations. Unlike the Rubis class, the Barracuda is equipped to deploy combat divers, swimmer delivery vehicles, and unmanned sensors. Its non-penetrating optronic masts from Safran transmit digital imagery to the combat center without exposing a physical periscope. The submarine becomes not just a hunter or a shield for France's SSBNs, but a stealthy instrument of reconnaissance capable of placing special forces on hostile shores or surveilling contested waters without detection. In this sense, the De Grasse represents a new paradigm for France's undersea doctrine, one that blends strategic deterrence, forward reconnaissance, and expeditionary reach. Its missions are tightly linked to France's independent nuclear deterrent, the Force de Frappe. Protecting ballistic missile submarines is one role, Escorting carrier and amphibious task groups is another, but increasingly these SSNs act as invisible eyes and ears, ensuring that Paris can project intelligence and power far from home without reliance on allies. Comparisons are inevitable. The U.S. Navy's Virginias are larger and optimized for multi-mission payload capacity, with the Block 5 adding a massive module for extra tomahawks and special operations equipment. Britain's astute class prioritizes endurance and world-class sonar for Atlantic operations. Russia's Yasin-M is a brute force strike submarine built to fire salvos of cruise missiles from vertical tubes. France, meanwhile, has pursued a distinct philosophy, a more compact but extremely quiet hunter, emphasizing survivability, agility, and the defense of its strategic assets. The Barracuda's design philosophy is about surgical capability rather than volume of fire. 
It reflects a nation that seeks independent, precise influence rather than saturation power. Each Barracuda reactor start is therefore not just a technical waypoint, it's a geopolitical signal. Six of these submarines will eventually form the backbone of France's undersea fleet, replacing the Rubis class entirely by 2030. Together, they extend the reach of French power into the Indo-Pacific, the North Atlantic, and the Mediterranean, all critical theaters where silent presence shapes strategic outcomes. For France, maintaining a domestic nuclear submarine industry is not simply about defense procurement, it is about sovereignty. Mastering nuclear propulsion means never depending on another power for critical technology. It means the ability to operate globally, protect overseas territories, and uphold commitments to allies under frameworks like NATO or the EU, all while sustaining an independent deterrent. In that context, de Grasse's divergence is the quiet assertion of a European nuclear capability that endures even as global defense landscapes shift. But what does this mean for Europe's collective naval balance? France is the only EU member operating nuclear-powered submarines, and that reality increasingly shapes its strategic weight within the continent. As Europe faces renewed geopolitical pressure from Arctic competition to Mediterranean instability, French SSNs give the bloc a tool few others possess, continuous undersea surveillance and strike reach. Whether Paris leverages that capability alone or as part of coordinated European missions, will shape how Europe's maritime security evolves over the next generation. The Barracuda class may lack the vertical launch volume of its American or Russian counterparts, but it embodies a more nuanced philosophy, one of endurance, discretion, and selective deterrence. In a world where detection equals vulnerability, the ability to remain unseen, to operate without broadcasting intent, is power in its purest form. De Grasse now joins that silent game, becoming part of a fleet designed to outlast noise, distance, and time itself. When its reactor went critical, it was not merely an engineering milestone, it was the ignition of a new instrument of statecraft, a vessel that, for the next four decades, will glide unseen through the world's oceans, ensuring that France's voice, though quiet, remains unmistakably heard.